The journey of a maker is a very personal one. Someone who has chosen to be a woodworker may only ever work in that material and never have the temptation to stray. Another person may be a welder, a jewelry maker, a ceramicist, glass blower, or even a machinist. Machining, or the act of cutting, shaping, or removing material from a workpiece using a machine tool, is a lost art these days, mostly because it's kind of an intimidating process. Not only does it seem very complicated, but there's very explicit math and numbers to be considered at all times. It requires a presence of mind with the aim of precision for the final result. This means thinking in terms of measurements as small as the thickness of a human hair. It's often difficult to integrate critical thinking into your creative process, but if you stay with me until the end, I'll explain how to integrate machinist thinking into your woodworking to improve your craftsmanship, make working with your tooling easier. This could make anyone a better maker. Before all the math, before all the rigid rules, the first thing a machinist thinks about is what material are we working with. This determines everything for how a project is made. The term speeds and feeds is a common phrase often repeated for machinists in their daily work. This references the RPMs and how fast a tool is fed through the material. A material's hardness, natural tendencies, and workability can determine what tooling is chosen and dictate how fast you run those tools. In the world of metals, aluminum will be easier and faster to cut than, say, steel. If you would try to cut steel with the speeds and feeds of aluminum, you would break and burn up all your tooling. The lingering question you may have is, what does this have to do with woodworking? Although a little more subtle, the varying degrees of wood material that you can work with have just as much variability as working with metal. The densities are quite different from pine to ironwood. Cutting ironwood at the same speed that you cut pine might be equivocable to cutting steel like you would aluminum. You might not break the tool, but you may prematurely dull your tooling, and you might create kindling rather than a bookshelf. Keeping the natural tendencies of your wood choice in mind can open up your capabilities of working with exotic materials and save you money on tooling in the process. Running things at the correct speed and feed will also keep your accuracy in check so that your products will be more precise for the end results. Running tooling too quickly through a material can make a tool deflect or cut poorly, resulting in the wrong size or poor surface finish quality. What it means for a tool to deflect is that it bends as you push it through the material because you're feeding it too fast. Smaller diameter tools are easier to see this concept, but it still happens in larger diameter tools as well. This is a machinist concept that is used daily to keep parts within tolerance. Tolerance is the acceptable variance within a measurement of a part in a print that is tolerated to be in spec or specification. Typical nomenclature for this would be one inch plus or minus 10 thousandths. This would mean that if a part were anywhere between 1.010 or one inch and 10 thousandths, and 0 0.990, that it would be considered good. If the decimal part is confusing, go back to your fractions in school. If you take any fraction and divide the numerator by the denominator, you will get a decimal equivalent. For instance, 1 fourth would equal 0.250, or 250 thousandths. Machinists say everything in terms of thousandths, so 0 0.000. For instance, the average human hair is around three thousandths thick, or about the thickness of a sheet of copy paper. You can take your woodworking to this level of precision if you want to, and it will indeed improve your quality of fine woodworking to finally do those tightly fitting joints that you may see your favorite YouTuber achieving. To accurately fit joints that need a friction fit or a tight fit, you will need to take your woodworking to a level of this precision to consistently achieve great results. Even just an awareness of this finite of measurement will help you realize how fits are achieved. Uh, sneaking up on a desired measurement is the best way to achieve precise results. This is relatable to what a machinist would call depth of cut. Woodworkers may use this term too, but it's my focus today. Let's say you want a one inch deep slot, half inch wide that you need to cut with a router. Should you take all the material out at once, causing smoke? Or should you take a depth of cut of eighth inch at a time with eight passes to get more accurate clean slot that has great service quality? This is another reason to keep your material in mind so you can think about how many cuts you need to get to your final depth. A softer wood, you'd be able to take a larger depth of cut. A more dense wood, you want to take a more shallow depth of cut. Just gotta think about these things. The harder the material, the more shallow depth of cut you wanna take. So as not to stress tooling or the material you're trying to cut. You must work with the natural tendencies of the material of your tooling and the material of your project. Most of the time this doesn't apply to a table saw, but if you're cutting through thicker pieces of hardwood around two to three inches thick, you may want to apply the depth of cut method to get desired results. Modern saws typically use this method to avoid tear out or splinters on their cuts. You can apply this to using a drill press as well. 
There is a program on a CNC called a pecking cycle for using a drill bit. This causes the drill bit to go down the desired depth of cut, pull all the way out, and then go back down for the same depth of cut into the material over and over at increasing depths. This serves two purposes. One, it clears the hole of debris to avoid interference with the cutting process. Two, it allows the drill to cool without forcing it to drill all the hole at once. Tool deflection is a very real issue for cutting anything accurately in any medium. Drill bits can bend and wander, thus causing curved holes, making a bit come out in a different spot on the back end of your material. If you take my musings to heart, there are many tools that are used in machining that can also be used in woodworking. I use my dial calipers almost all the time to check thickness of wood, to scribe, to find hole centers, and any other dimensions of a project. To use these, you will need to know what decimals mean in terms of fractions since you've probably only used a tape measure up to this point. For this, I would recommend a decimal equivalence chart. You can find these on the internet pretty easily. I very much think everyone needs one of these in their shop. If you have trouble reading a dial caliper, you can refer to my video on reading dial calipers for further info. Obviously, there is always the digital option as well. No shame, I promise. All of this is obviously for my imperial friends because the metric system is a lot less convoluted. But for those of us in the US or other places close to that, we spend a lot of time going back and forth between metric and imperial, and a decimal equivalence chart does a lot to help you with that. Some charts even incorporate metric in with the imperial measurements for comparison, so you can use it in reference to each other. Another use for calipers is when you're pre-drilling for screws that are going into brittle material or even a fragile design to avoid splitting. If you measure the root diameter with a set of calipers, you can determine the pre-drilled hole necessary to let the screw go into the material and let the threads of the screw still engage. This will help you avoid wood cracking for assemblies. If you prefer the non-math method, you can hold the drill bit behind a screw to see if you can see the drill behind the screw. It will give you a decent guess for what size hole to drill. Marking on material with your measurements may seem really simple, but you can actually refine that as well. Scribing can actually help you increase your accuracy in working with wood or any material. This is a very common practice for machinists to use. Scribing a very small line into the surface of material. Something a lot of people don't think about is that a line has a certain amount of thickness. Depending on a pencil lead or a marking utensil thickness, a line drawn can be as much as 35 thousandths. This makes where you choose to cut on a line important for tight fits and accuracy. Granted, the scribe line on soft woods is way thicker than in hardwoods, so you need to keep that in mind. Yet another tool that machinists typically use that can be used in woodworking is a reamer. Reamers are meant to hone a hole to more exact size for precise results. Reamers do exactly what they say they do. They ream a hole to an exactly a specific size. Drill bits might say they're a certain size. They're actually notorious for over drilling the hole size by a slight amount. If I had to describe it in terms of fits, I would say they drill it to a slip fit, so something will go through that hole very easily. Using a rimmer after pre-drilling a smaller hole can allow you to get a very precise hole size for mating wood with either dowels or mixed media of some kind. I have mounted wooden wheels out of blood wood into a quarter inch round rod using this method. If you use the correct reamer, you can create press fits in wood, making glue unnecessary. Last but not least, another tool that you can use that machinists commonly use is a machinist square. You may have already seen something akin to this in the fancy woodpecker tools that popular YouTube woodworkers use. There's no doubt that woodpecker tools are actually very slick, but did you know you can purchase a machinist square of very high accuracy for a fraction of the cost? It may not have the rule on it to make your marks, but you can have a very precise square for marking for very cheap, at least until you make it big and you can afford fancier tools. There are levels even to this in the machinist world, but you can purchase something very accurate for very cheap. Material science dictates a lot of these tips that I've gone over here. Working with these materials well requires at least a very basic knowledge of our natural tendencies. So the next time you're getting ready for a project, think about the material you're gonna use, the tolerances you require, and the speeds and feeds to make it right. Even just keeping these concepts in mind will make you consider your designs, be more deliberate in your choices, and refine your skills to the next level.